بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الأحباب Many people make claims against Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala ta and they claim and associate his da'wah with the da'wah of the Khawarij, the sect which declared takfir or declared other Muslims to not be Muslims for the major sins and they appeared during the time of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in and fought them fought Ali and Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhuma killed Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu and their predecessor appeared during the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and so what you find from the Raf of the Shia and you find from groups like Jamaat al-Ahbash and other extreme Sufi sects is that they claim the Dawah of Muhammad ibn al Wahhab was the Dawah of the Khawarij. And in fact, the Imam Rahmatullah was free from that Dawah. If you look at his writings and you look at his life, if you actually look at what he said, what he propagated, you'll find other than their claims. So that's why we always have to be truthful. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, had to burhanakum in kuntum sadaqeen. Give your evidence if you're truly truthful. If you're being truthful, come with the evidence. And we see people who are misguided now, like uh, Hassan Nasrullah, or in fact, he is actually the helper of the shaitan not the helper of Allah, and his group is not Hezbollah, but in fact they are the party of the Shaitan, because they hate Ahlul Sunnah and they kill Ahlul Sunnah and they curse the companions as a part of their religious faith. رضي الله تعالى عنه مجمعين على صحابة الرسول صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم. And so, let's very quickly look at what some of the Imams of Ahlul Sunnah that came after the time of Muhammad ibn Wahhab, what they said about these false claims. Imam Abdullah ibn Abdurrahman Abba, uh, Abba Batin al Najdi rahimahullah ta'ala said, clarifying the methodology or the ideology of the Khawarij, he said, if you are clear about their madhab, and its basic principle of pronouncing takfir for committing sins and aware that they pronounce takfir upon the companions seeing the killing of them not only allowable but an act of worship if this is clear to you then it also becomes clear the misguidance of many of people many of the people of this time who believe that Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala and his followers, may Allah have mercy upon them, were Khawarij. They, uh, Muhammad ibn Wahhab and his followers, rahimahullah, loved all the companions and believe in their high virtue over all others, seeing the adherence of their minhaj and obligation and duty. They supplicate for them and censor those that speak ill of them or belittle even just one of them. They do not pronounce takfir on anyone for uh, a sin that he may have committed, nor do they uh, flee or be away from the people of sins uh, or, or declare them to be apostates from Islam. Indeed, they only pronounce takfir upon the one that associates a partner with Allah or beautifies shirk in the mind of the people. So this is very important, Ayyul Ahbab, what the Shaykh is saying is that 
Muhammad ibn Wahhab ta'ala was on the minhaj of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and was on the minhaj of the Salaf of this Ummah, the minhaj of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, because his creed, his fiqh, his understanding of Islam only came from Kitab Allah wa Sunnatul Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the what the companions radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een were upon. And with the way we can test this hypothesis is by looking into his text to see were they coming from the Quran and the Sunnah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were they coming from the understanding of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een we can look by the scale for deducing this hypothesis and for verifying this hypothesis is by looking into his text. Then the second thing we can look at is by looking into his text after we determine whether they agree with the Quran and the Sunnah and the methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah, then we can also look at his text and see what he says about the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een. What does he say about the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What does he say about the Quran? Does he quote for the Qur'an? Does he understand the Qur'an like the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in? Does he go back to their tafsir? And if the answer is yes, then we deduce that he is from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and that he was a great Imam of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah that appeared in the later times as a reviver of the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Arab Peninsula. And of course, the answer to those questions, as in my studies, and I spent at least four years myself doing personal research on this, and I deduce exactly what the Sheikh is saying. So the Sheikh went on to say, half of the, uh, he said that Sheikh Muhammad ibn Wahhab, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and his followers love all the companions and believe in their high virtue over all others, seeing the adherence of their minhaj and obligation and duty. And we've already stated this. Then he went on to say, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, a mushrik is a kafir, according to the kitab and the sunnah, and the consensus of the ummah. How is it possible then to take a parallel, or to make a parallel, between the Shaykh, Shaykh Muhammad ibn Radu Wahhab, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and his followers, like the Khawarij? How is it possible to make a comparison? The only person that makes this parallel is an obstinate individual who wants to deter the masses or a person that is ignorant of the Khawarij ideology, blind following what he has heard from others. SubhanAllah. This is incredible basira insight. Incredible fiqh fiddin. Because all he's saying is why don't you look for yourself? Look into his text. Then you'll see what the Diobandis, what the Naqshbandis, what the uh, Khawarij, the modern day Tikfiris, what the Sufis say, the extreme Sufis, what they say are based on lies. Because you have to come with evidence. Allah says you have to come with evidence. Bring your evidence if you're being truthful. Don't lie and just say, oh, my sheikh said, he said this. I've met many people who speak about Muhammad al Wahhab. They don't even know. They've never read anything. They don't even have the, the ability to go to his text in Arabic. But so much of his texts are translated in English, they have no excuse. But they still said, uh, so-and-so is Wahhabi. This one is Wahhabi. That it, with no evidence. This is all I ask you to do. I don't call you to the Imam. I don't call you to myself. I don't call you to anything else. I call you to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the men had to the methodology of the Salaf and Ummah and, and in verifying what has been said about the Shaykh Rahmatullahi May Allah bless him with Jannah al and forgive him of his sins Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen and I call you 